For the better part of a thousand years, this windswept yet strategic headland has been a place of refuge and defence. The struggles and exploits of warriors long ago are now but memories, their power, their palisades, long replaced by later waves of building and rebuilding. Even the massive 19th and 20th century coast artillery defences are abandoned and disintegrating. But one thing remains, preserved, restored and standing as an impressive reminder of what once was. In the 1870s and 80s, the Pacific Ocean colonies of Britain felt threatened by the hostilities that had broken out between Great Britain and Russia. During 1886, a Russian warship, the Vestnik, visited the port of Wellington. The armament of this one ship was greater than the total armament of all New Zealand's port defences at that time. With the fear that conflict between Russia and Britain would result in an attack on Britain's colonies, urgent action was taken to improve New Zealand's defences. Foremost among the new armaments were Armstrong disappearing guns that were provided for each of the main ports. The headland of Pukekura, or Tairoa Head as it became known, guarded what was at that time New Zealand's largest and most prosperous city. Fortification work at Tairoa Head had already begun in the autumn of 1884. In the beginning, there were just four permanent militia, 26 prisoners, 14 prison warders and six tradesmen. They and the others who followed them opened a quarry at Pilot's Beach, built a tramway from the beach and excavated by hand the hidden emplacements, the tunnels and underground gun pit for the Armstrong gun. Defence construction was to continue on this headland in stages for some 36 years. Armstrong guns were manufactured by W.G. Armstrong and Co. at their Ellswick Works near Newcastle in England. A vast enterprise with a huge labour force which at its peak totaled 20,000 workers. The gun itself was mounted at Fort Tairoa on the 7th of June 1889. It was a 6 inch 5 ton Mark V breech loading gun on an Ellswick disappearing hydro pneumatic carriage. The great merit of this heavy coastal defence gun was that it was loaded and aimed in an underground gun pit. An above ground observation post provided the range, direction and elevation. Loaded and aimed, it rose above the ground, the lanyard was pulled and it was capable of firing a 100 pound shell at a rate of one shell per minute with a range of 8,000 yards which is approximately 7 kilometres and when fired the recoil instantly retracted the gun back down into the pit for reloading. In the years following 1886, this gun at Fort Tairoa fired some 488 rounds, but none of them at an enemy target. Came the year 1914, and the British Empire, indeed the whole world, was again at war. This time the enemy was far away and New Zealand's shores were not menaced. The Armstrong gun, not needed, stayed in its gun pit, untended and quietly corroded. After 1921, the obsolete defences at Tairoa Head were largely abandoned. There was little concern for New Zealand's defence. The Armstrong gun was sold to a Dunedin solicitor. Well, every law firm needs at least one big gun. 
Their target? The US Pacific Fleet at anchor in its base at Pearl Harbor. When Japan entered World War II, Fort Tairoa was again manned and became a hive of activity. Members of the 82nd Battery New Zealand Artillery set up their barracks on Pilot's Beach and their parade ground on the site of today's car park. The ancient disappearing gun, which the lawyer had never removed, was quickly made ready and was for the first six months of the war the only fixed defence for Dunedin, before, once again, being abandoned to rust and disintegrate. The undoubted low point for this historic gun came in 1972, when the Royal Albatross security fence was extended. It was proposed then that the Armstrong gun be removed from Tyroa Head altogether. Its existence today is in large part due to the local antique arms group. They lobbied for the gun to be retained in its gun pit and agreed to reinstate it into its original condition. This included finding a missing breech block and a hydro pneumatic pump as well as making up other fittings which had been stripped off. The gun was in a sorry state. But a major effort began Local firms such as Farrah Engineering pitched in, Rotary Clubs and other groups raised funds and a small dedicated group worked tirelessly restoring the gun itself. It was a great day when after a major exercise Jack Joyce the convener, Colin Young a former New Zealand artillery artificer and Laurie Stewart were able to fit the recovered breech block. A new tunnel was constructed to give public access from outside the Albatross colony. Displays were set up in the underground tunnels and magazine areas and in 1987 the new facility was open to the public. Today the Armstrong gun at Fort Tyroa is fully refurbished it is the only one of its kind in the world, in working order and still in its original gun pit. Its manufacture, installation and finally its restoration demonstrated each in their turn impressive examples of quality engineering.